I needed some fairly long 2x6s, and that's always a problem hauling them. That's the great advantage to chick mangling. I'll flip out that windshield. I don't end up with so much hanging out the back. Well, I thought I'd explain why I was buying dimensional lumber. I don't buy a lot of that. Because it's outrageously expensive and you're usually you're kind of dealing with crap. But what it's for, I needed some six buys to use for this lumber maker. You know, these things are adjustable. Like here it's set to run on a 2x4. Or if you go the full width, you can go a 2x6. You know, the bar clamps in here. So my plan is to take these 2x6s. I was hoping to get a 20-footer, but they don't seem to make 20-footers anymore. And that might not have worked, really. It might not have been long enough either. So I'm going to use these they're 16 footers and I'll have to piece it together to get the full length because I got to go you know 20 foot and when you're cutting you always have to be out over the edge some you know to give it support then I just find the flattest side and nail on but there will be some work with the chalk line to get that straight but then I'll cut you know once I get it into position I can make two cuts on the log and it'll end up with one piece slightly over six inches wide because there's a little offset on the, on the bar. But I can make one solid beam that way. And most of these are going to be I don't know, like a foot to six, you know, a foot on the narrow end, up to 16 on the, the fat end, kind of in that area. But what I'm doing is trying to get away from, instead of having to hew them flat, which is pretty wasteful. This way I'll end up with, you know, two big slabs that I have use for, you know, that I can cut lumber out of. And I don't want to split a log. I want the center in the center. Uh, it, it keeps them from warping, you know, it just, it is a more stable log that way. So I'll cut, like I say, I'll cut one way, turn around, cut right back the other way without moving the board. So uh, it'll be a little set up since it's, I'll have to use two boards, but it'll work. So I'll just end up using the chalk line to get it right. But it'll be a fairly smooth cut then. And these will be a little hard cutting because these are seasoned oak, you know, very hard. Uh, usually, it, you know, oak is kind of rugged to work with, but if you work oak green, it cuts fairly decent. I know uh, I worked before with trying to knock some logs out once on some seasoned oak. And you can chip the, the blade on the axe. You know, that, that oak is hard. But that'll give me good pieces to work with. Like I say, I'm trying to get away from hewing. And then I don't waste these big, because I got used to them. It's going to be some good, good lumber too. And like I say, you know, I'm trying to go center because, like I said, if you were to split a log, uh, it's like a stock of celery, the tension is on the outside, and it'll bow like that. You know, so you really want to keep it centered. Then all they have to worry about is if it's green, as it seizes, it'll tend to want to twist a little bit. Not much. Oak isn't too bad as long as they're centered. It'll just be a little bit of a twist, but there's there's a method of getting away from that. But that's what the dimensional lumber is for. And then, you know, once I get them cut down, they'll be much more manageable. Because, you know, to try to build with a log this big, that's a hell of a lot of weight. And, uh, you know, really on oak, like I say, I'll end up with six inches but my other one, when I built, I was using round logs about this big. And then, of course, you never have a flat wall. You know, you're dealing with ups and downs. This way you'll get a flat wall. Now, part of the reason people used to do that, they would put lath and plaster on the inside and 
like if you've seen a lot of them where they've got the, the notch corners that are like dovetailed, the theory behind that was then they would side over them. But the siding, the idea at the time was only poor people lived in log cabins. So if you lived in a log cabin, you built it in such a way that when you had the money, you could put siding on it to make it look like a frame house. In fact, I know a lot of houses that people thought were frame houses, and then they go to tear them down and discover they were actually built out of logs. You just couldn't tell it because they were covered over. In fact, I know there's one down here that was that way. And one of them in a museum, when they went to move it from its original location, it was one of the original buildings in Fargo. And when they went to move it, they discovered that it was a log cabin, but it just didn't look like it. You'll notice a lot of them that have got the fancy dovetailed kind of corners. A lot of those, you know, they've, they've covered them up at one time, and now they're uncovering them again. And you'll find all the nail holes where the siding was nailed on. You'll see that almost every one of them was done that way at one time. Partly because it looked more prosperous, but partly because it was warmer too, you know, less maintenance. But, you know, it was so, there was very little insulation value to it. In fact, the oak has very little insulation value at all. And most of these around here were built out of oak. But I know it's funny, where I run the road grader, you know, like I say, it used to be that a log cabin, only poor people lived in log cabins, but now, there's somebody who went and spent a lot of money putting this log siding on an old frame house. And to drive by it, you would look at it and you would swear it was logs because he's got the overhang and the, and the corners and the whole thing. And I should have paid more attention when they were doing it. But it's just an old frame house underneath. So, you know, time has changed. It's kind of come full circle. Some of the fanciest houses around now are being built out of or built to look like they're made out of logs, but aren't really logs. But that's what the frame lumber is for. It's an aggravating thing, trying to find good lumber in the lumber yard. But I picked out four straight as need be anyway. You know, as good as I can expect them. You know, I could make my own guide board uh, but if I was to cut uh, that nice of a 2 by 6 out of ash, I would have better uses for it than as a guide board. You know, because they get broken up, you know, from my, I'll be driving nails in and then you pull them out and the board gets beat up some. You know, the only alternative would have been to use like a piece of channel iron. And I thought about doing that, like a, a 20 foot or 20 but longer piece of like a six inch channel and then run the saw on that, but I think that'd be a chattering, vibrating thing. So I think this will work for what I want it to do. But that's why the eight inches, just to make full use of the width of this. But I'm not gonna do that today, but now I got the boards. I've got no excuse. So when I was in Fleet Farm 2, picked up a little pickaxe. Not that I really needed one, but it's kind of handy to have, especially when it's built this solid. This is one of the Swiss Army ones. And the thing is really built well, good and heavy. You know, a lot of times, you know, like I've got that entrenching tool, has got a pick on it, but, you, you know, really not a serious pick. This is a serious little pick. And a mattock on the other end. So, digging out roots and stuff, that could be handy. But I think she was... Uh, about 30 bucks. But she'll go in a tick magnet. It'll be a good tool to have in there.